Welcome back to this fourth installment for Easter season for Summit. I'm Mark. Let's jump into the readings again this week. Okay, so I was waiting for it. I was expecting it. It was the last few minutes of dinner with my family. I have my beautiful wife, my four kids were all around the table, and I was just waiting. I could time it. I could time it so easily. Because when the last few bits of the vegetables, last few bites of food leave the plate, the question's gonna happen. Hey dad, what can we have for dessert? Hey dad, what can we have for dessert? Hey dad, can I have this for dessert? Oh, can I have five cookies instead of three cookies? Can I have this piece of pie instead of this piece of pie? It's always, it's a negotiation. Honestly, honest to God. This is something that people won't tell you. And if you don't have any kids yet, or if you're called to have kids at some point, I'm gonna let you know a little secret here, okay? It's easier to negotiate the release of hostages from a bank than it is to negotiate the number of desserts or the amount of dessert you can have when you have uh, kids who are, you know, five, six, seven years old, okay? So I'm waiting for this whole thing. And when I told my one daughter, you know, how much dessert she could have, hey, just have a couple cookies today because she's been wired up and sugared up since, since Easter. Since Jesus came out of the tomb, the chocolate's been out of the foil, you know what I'm saying? So I said, you know what, let's just tonight, let's just kind of, let's just take it, take it easy, ease it back a little bit, have a smaller dessert. And she has the nerve to look at me and say, don't you love me? No, that's pretty awesome manipulation right there. And I wanted to retaliate with a lot of different things, but because I'm not a horrible dad, not this day at least, I said, you know I love you, but here's the reason, try to explain to him. She said, but if you love me, and then I started to lose it. And after she said it the third time, but don't you love me? I felt like I was back in that reading we you talked about, right? With Peter on the side of Galilee, when Jesus is saying, if you love me, serve. So I started to recount all the different ways that I loved her. It was not my finest parenting moment, but I pointed to the roof over her head, the food we had just consumed, the shirts on their back, all the different activities they're in. I actually had her walk upstairs with me, and I walked her through in her bedroom, and I pointed out every single stuffed animal, all 84 of them surrounding her bed, to show, again, just how much I love her. Why do I bring this up? Because I'm dad of the year. <laughs> no, that's not why I bring it up. Why I bring it up is this. That oftentimes, we take certain things for granted in our life, especially here in America, and especially if you have you know, a, a comfortable, you know, um, um, an average to above average kind of existence, you know, maybe in the suburbs, or you have a nice house, or a nice family, that kind of a thing. A lot of us take things for granted. We take things for granted like food, like shelter. We take those things for granted because we just have to think about them a lot. But when you've ever done missionary work, if you've traveled to other countries or other parts of the country who are not necessarily as financially blessed or areas where um, in the infrastructure has kind of imploded. When you go off to, to foreign countries and you do mission work and you're with people who really understand the, the, the beauty and, and have gratitude for things like food or shelter. For most of us, we didn't give it a second thought. We want food, we open the fridge, we go to the pantry, it's always there. But when you actually go to those other places and you see people who live a very, very different lifestyle and, and you see the gratitude in their eyes when you're there serving them and serving alongside of them. And it's so overwhelming when they actually wanna share what little they have with you. It changes your heart. It puts things in the gospel into context, with scripture into context. They talk about the hungry, they talk about the thirsty. When Jesus talks about these corporal works of mercy, you know, it really puts things in perspective. And I was struck on that in this week's readings because in the second reading from Revelation, we're told that we will no longer hunger, we will no longer thirst, that, that, that in Christ's coming, and when we're all brought together again as one body, we're given new bodies and we live, in the eternity of God and the glory of God forever. There'll be no more hunger, there'll be no more thirst, that we'll all be fully, beautifully satiated. We're all gonna find this, this in God, you know, because we belong to God, because you and I are sons and daughters of God by virtue of our baptism. That at every single mass, God desires to feed us, I mean, literally with his flesh and blood, but also just to feed us spiritually and to renew us in his grace. And that's why those words in the gospel are so poignant and beautiful, he says, that, that you're in the Father's hand and nobody's gonna take you out of the Father's hand. No one's gonna take you out of my hand, God is saying. Like, I got you, I'm protecting you. You know, my role as father is, is to provide, certainly, you know, my, my, my wife's and my role is to provide for our kids. You know, roof over their head, food on the table, clothes on their back, opportunities as best we can. But it's also to protect. And Christ is the good shepherd, he protects us. And in, in the Easter season, we're, we're looking around and we're seeing all those threats, those, those temptations, those struggles, those dark things that kind of maybe were brought to the surface during Lent. They're still threats. They're still there. But what does it mean to live in the resurrection is to remind ourselves that, you know what, we're not going to be controlled by this world. We're not going to be dragged down by this world. We're not going to become, we're not even gonna become um, blind to this world, that constantly wanting more and needing more and realizing that all we have and all we really need is all wrapped up in God. 
is all wrapped up in Christ. So people can take shots at us, people can tempt us, people can try and tear us down like they did to, to the, the apostles in the first reading. But at the end of the day, if we know God's on our side, if we know that we're in God's hand, like it says in the Gospels, then we understand that, you know what, it's all going to be okay. That, that God's got this and God's got us. And that God, the good Father, He doesn't just want to provide for us, He wants to spoil us. And that's what heaven's going to be. God's spoiling us for eternity. Heaven is not just asking the Father for dessert and getting it. Heaven is the Father giving us way more dessert than we've ever deserved. I hope you're enjoying this summer series this far during Easter season. We'll talk to you next week.